Hi Lance, a.k.a. Mr. Corporate Death, and welcome to Bandbond. Thank you for the interview. Uh, it's good to uh, hear from Sweden. You know, after nine years, Macabre is finally back with a new album called Carnival of Killers. What took you so long? Well, there's several reasons. I mean, if you look at the past year, this uh, coronavirus hasn't helped anything. So that was part of the delay. But, um, you know, we just didn't have the right record deal, the right record offer. And we weren't going to jump into another album. I had the songs, a lot of them written way before we ever recorded it and stuff. But it was just looking for a record deal. And, you know, this is kind of the way we've always done it. But... You know, we've been around for a long time, and we weren't just going to jump into any record deal that wasn't going to promote our band like, you know, like we wanted to, uh, and just to get the album out. So we waited for uh, the right offer, and we finally got it with Nuclear Blast. Yeah, and that's we great. we did an album in 93 with them, Sinister Slaughter, and, you know, now they're like the biggest metal label in the world, so... We were happy we waited, and uh, we're happy to be back with Nuclear Blast. Yeah. They're great people, and they're total pros. Since you primarily write about serial killers, which characters get the honors to get their stories told this time? Well, we went back on a lot of old killers. I figured some of these old killers, the popular ones that everyone knows, like Gacy and uh, Richard Ramirez and Ed Gein, deserved more than one song so i figured this is my way around like doing a whole album on this guy i could do different albums and do different songs about these guys you know and there's no rules to music you know so you can do whatever you want how accurate are you in your storytelling regarding uh, the murderers you sing about i try to get it totally accurate i don't make anything up see if anything i, I don't condone these guys i don't say these are good people and this, you should model your life after this guy. I don't say that in my nah. music. If anything, I say they're bad people. And watch out. It's more of a warning to people. And I do it in different ways. I um, sometimes take it from the killer singing the song, just like telling his story, what he's going to do. And that's kind of like the Friday the 13th kind of movie thing where this guy's just looking to kill people. But um, most of the time, it's like a newspaper article where I tell all the facts in there, but I try to rhyme it a lot. I use a lot of rhymes and different music and vocal styles in there. So, but it's all accurate, except for, like, sometimes I'll say, this guy's in hell now, or, you know, he's going to hell, or something like that, where it's like, okay, you could take it or leave it, you know, but it's all facts. Have you ever been confronted by people who don't understand why you give these killers so much attention? Um, not really. Um, I've had a few, like, uh, you know, responses over the internet or something like, but I mean, most of the people I talk to are like, like the idea and stuff, but it's like, I, I call what I do a uh, creative storytelling. This is the evil side of man. There's, I mean, I could sing about history in all different ways and there's plenty of evil history to sing about, but this is the area I focused on was the serial killers. I got interested in it when I did a book report in junior high on Bonnie and Clyde, and I read about Albert Fish and Ed Gein. I'm like, how could this old guy eat little kids and make stews out of them? I'm like, wow. Then years later, it came out in my music, so I'm pretty much telling the story like a book does. And if anything, I, I said it's a warning to people, watch out. This is not something to be brushed under the carpet and say, oh, we should forget about this evil part of history no it, it, uh, people can learn from it uh to you know protect themselves and be more safe and watch out you know don't go wandering off with a stranger somewhere describe the feeling you get when you come across a great story that you haven't heard before um it, i haven't seen any really good ones I'm, I'm sure there's plenty out there i don't really study this stuff too much now i used to be a big serial killer buff and i'd read about these guys all the time just for the writing purpose, you know, for lyrics and, you know, the storytelling. But I go through phases with it, and that's probably another part where I didn't come out with another album after three years, after the last one or something, because I take breaks from it, you know. When I feel like writing, I do. And sometimes I'll, you know, hear about these guys, and, okay, here's a new guy 
but there's not that many Jeffrey Dahmers coming around or, you know, Ed Gians or Albert Fishes, you know. You might hear about some, like, spree killer that goes out and kills people or, you know, serial killers too, but, you know, it's like they kind of focus on, like, more of the cannibal ones and the crazy ones, the real demented ones. I know you've gotten this question probably a thousand times before, <laughs> sorry about that, but according to the legend, you became acquainted with John Wayne Gacy, right? Yes. Yeah. T tell me about uh, your first encounter with him. Well, I was, uh, my friend from Florida is a serial killer. He collects art, and he, he corresponds with these different killers. A lot of them, you know, like writes to him, or he's actually met a lot of them. And uh, he was getting Gacy paintings. And I, Gacy lived lived uh, in prison like five and a half hours from me. And um, I started writing him and getting paintings through the mail. And uh, then my friend from Florida, he showed me pictures of him and Gacy in death row. He went to meet him. He flew out and stayed out here for a while and went and met Casey and he had photos with him and I'm like wow oh, I, I want to do that I want to go meet him he's like write him and then Casey started calling me once a week on the phone uh collect from Bernard prison this is uh, John Wayne Gacy you know? okay I'll take the call and uh, he would call me like once a week and just say what's up you know <laughs> 